G'day, it's Rowan from Elfshot Design. In this video, I'm going to restore an old toy wooden tractor, one that I had when I was a little kid. This is a photo of my grandfather taken around 1978. When I was a little fella, my grandfather built me a wooden tractor. So this is the tractor. Now I remember when I was a little fella, I used to push this round in the backyard. My old man would chase me while he was mowing the lawn. And I'd push this thing away, running at a million miles an hour, screaming and laughing the whole time. Good memories. Let's go and take this over to the workbench, take a close look at it, and see what we can do to give it a good tune-up. It's holding up okay after 40 years. It's missing a few bits such as the steering wheel and the whole rear section where the seat should be. It looks like it's had a repair job at some stage because there's no bolt holes or obvious glue lines where the seat section would have been. The metal parts are a bit rusty and the wheels wobble around a bit. Unfortunately I couldn't find any reference photos so I've modelled the tractor in 3D to try different ideas for the seat. It's a simple design that allows little people to sit on the tractor or push it along. I'll add a tow hook at the front so we can attach a tow cord. The first thing to do is dismantle the original tractor so I can really see how much is still usable. I know I'm going to have to replace the axle, but I'm a little bit worried about how deep some of those cracks are in the timber. My plan was to bleach the wheels to see if that would clean up the ageing. Unfortunately they're really brittle and I just don't think they're going to stand up to much use. There's also some deep cracks in the body, which could be glued, but you know what? Why not just create a Mark II and keep the design consistent with the original? I found a length of structural timber that has pretty deep bow in it, but I can clean this up on the planer and the thickness up. This lumber is starting out 90mm wide, but by the time I'm done, it'll be 70mm dressed, which is the same dimensions as the original tractor. I plane it with a bow up until I get a nice flat side, and then I can take it to the thicknesser to square the other sides. Recently my brother asked me what I thought about passing the tractor along to his little fella. I thought this was a great idea. I was hoping to salvage the old parts, but I'd rather know the tractor is really solid and safe. I feel that by copying the original design, I'm still honouring the memory of my grandfather and my own childhood. I've got these coach screws that I'm going to screw into the timber when I glue it. That'll do two things. It'll stop the timber all sliding around. You want this to pull in nice and tight so it's minimal sanding. It'll also add strength to the timber as well. So I've got four layers here, or five layers for this piece. So I've drawn I've draw a series of pilot holes so these will follow through and pull everything in the right direction. These three here that are countersunk, these, these screws are going to sit flush to the surface and they're designed to go right through and sit just below the top of the tractor up here. 
And then there's another four that go through this lower piece, which also line up with the front wheel. So these four will go through and they'll finish in this second last piece from the top. So all together we've got seven coach screws and with the glue that will hold this thing together and be nice and strong. Let's grab some glue and glue this thing up. While the project is very simple, it still requires some thought around the sequencing. In these shots, I've clamped the rear axle block, squared it off, then marked the bolt holes with the drill. Just drilling enough to make a mark. Then I'll take the chassis to the drill press to finish the holes so I know they're completely vertical. Thinking ahead like this is all about minimising work. My goal is to assemble the project strategically so I can sand flat solid surfaces. I don't want to be standing around awkward angles and hard to reach places to get ready for finishing. Whenever I glue, I ensure there's some way to lock the pieces together to prevent sliding. In this case, I've screwed the brass screws down so they protrude slightly through the bottom of the seat. Then they lock into the pilot holes so it's much easier to clamp the wet surfaces. I use a water spray bottle and a clean rag to wipe up excess glue. drill press so I'm using a piece of scrap wood with a hole drilled through it to get a perpendicular hole with the hand drill. I'm using a pre-stained conditioner and two coats of walnut stain. The pre-stain just helps reduce blotchiness when the stain goes on. Although this brand claims to be a one-step solution I'll give it two coats of additional clear as well. In the video here it shows satin but I actually used gloss. The stain coats need to be rubbed back with steel wool and for the clear I'll just give it two coats and call it done.
Here I'm heating up the wheel so I can apply some beeswax to blacken the iron. The wax will melt into the pores and prevent rusting. In a box of junk, I found a perfectly sized plastic spacer to allow the steering wheel to spin around. I added a dab of glue to the brass screw to stop it unwinding. Well it's time to go and give this thing a road test. We're about to head off on a family trip, so we'll take the tractor and we'll see what young Bruce thinks about it. Let's go. He knows where to go. Good boy. Well done. You gotta hold on to the steering wheel. <laughs> oh, I'm a little puppy dog. Hehehehe <laughs> 